going on guys so I got my weekly footage for you starting off here Monday this was not a very good day for me um, at least squat wise I've said this in a, my past few videos just about I have to train early in the morning so I pretty much it's not really a food thing I just, I'm really tight so kind of like my perceived exertion of all the lifts a little bit uh, more than it probably should be. So maybe like, you know, 315 doesn't feel like 315 and, you know, 335 doesn't feel like 335 and whatnot. So I find myself, maybe my reps aren't as hard as I think they are, uh, but just everything feels a little bit more grindy. And yeah, I'm just having some issues the past few weeks with, with having consistent um, efforts on that Monday squat day. So maybe I need to, to not train Monday so I don't really have time uh, unless it's super early or earlier I guess I shouldn't say super early uh, maybe I should just you know I only train five days a week so maybe I should just try to not train on Mondays um, if that fit better fits my schedule because like I said it's been about three or four weeks in a row now I've never really felt a hundred a hundred percent comfortable you know, even if I, I PR I always feel like that I'm still a little bit achy uh, just things don't feel great in the morning for me but this I'm not sure this is my top set I don't have my training notebook with me right now at the moment uh, but I do believe I hit a 340 for a set of five, which was just five pounds off a, a PR for me. So uh, definitely not a bad day. It was in my kind of range that I was shooting for. Not a PR, but can't say I was uh, disappointed by any means by the by the session. Then I moved on to bench press. So probably what I'm going to start doing, at least for my next cycle, uh, four weeks, is to go back to pause bench press. Uh, it feels really foreign since probably the past, you know, uh, at least eight weeks I believe I've been doing you know just like touch and goes for the most part but uh, I decided to do pause because most of my sessions I end up benching alone and doing pause a little bit safer at least I'm not using such a uh, such heavy weights and that way God forbid anything does happen I could probably get it off my chest as opposed to if I'm doing touch and goes and I get stuck I'm pretty much screwed so I'm gonna do uh, pause reps and even though it seems kind of strange, you know, people probably probably assume I'm doing this for powerlifting. I don't really have any plans of competing anytime soon. I do want to get into it though, don't get me wrong. But I actually do feel uh, better stimulation on my chest when I pause reps. Same thing with like dumbbell floor press, which I've been doing pretty consistently as an assistance movement on my overhead press day. I feel like crazy chest stimulation when I don't really get any momentum. So even from a hypertrophy perspective, especially for me, I have a trouble kind of activating my chest. I think it's uh, probably superior than doing touch and goes, even though I'm using probably about 10% less weight. And this is just a set of my uh, deficit reverse lunges. These are brutal, uh, no doubt. Like I, I like to do some unilateral work at least once a week. Uh, I usually do some kind of lunge actually twice a week, but at least once a week, I think almost everyone should get that in. I don't do almost any quad assistance work, um, but I think that lunges hit it a little bit. And I like doing isolateral work, maybe if you're doing like Bulgarian split squats or something where you're using one leg, um, not just bilateral, back squatting, front squatting all the time. I think it could be beneficial. So I'm speeding up a little bit, and what I really wanted to show you guys this week was what I've supersetted this with. Um, these are like banded hip abductions. And I'm going to credit these to Brett Contreras because I've never seen anyone else do these. Um, but yeah, I just fold up my mini bands. It's just not very thick at all. Uh, by fours, then I, I get a pretty good um, tension on here. So I usually, I think I did this for three sets. I guess I did it after each one of my reverse lunges on this Monday. For about 15 to 20 reps. So, yeah, this is only like band I really have. Uh, maybe I should invest in some thicker ones or, or different ones. But I think these are awesome. Again, I think this will help my kind of Vegas collapse. It almost everybody has to a point when they squat. Um, obviously, strengthen your glutes and your hip abductors, which is really, really important during the squat, you know, to keep that good position. So maybe a new exercise for some of you guys to try out there, the banded hip abductions. Again, I got that from Brett Contreras. And this was my really, uh, one of my best days. I think I'd probably say I had three good training days, one mediocre and one really crappy uh, this week. But this was Tuesday, this was my heavy deadlift day. I wasn't really thinking about pulling a, a single on this day, I just kind of went in and felt good and then went for it. I was just gonna pull a normal triple. Uh, but after a while, I was like, okay, I think I got 405 in me today. So I went for it. And this is the 405 set right here. Um, 
really liked this this pole for the most part. It was really weird because it was slow off the ground. Uh, I actually have this this uh, in slow motion in a second as well. But it was slow off the ground. And once I got it got it past like even mid shin, it just kind of flew up. And um, I'll kind of break it down a little bit in this next clip. But I was really hyped with that 405. It's an awesome PR for me. Uh, I feel like I had pretty good form with it as well. So it looks like here again you can see the speed from the the to the knee isn't great. One thing I wasn't really pleased about is that hitch at the end. I need to learn that the lift is over when I extend my hips and not when I throw my shoulders back. So um, especially when I pulled on Friday, um, I really tried to hit that point home. So um, and then kind of one thing I wanted to talk about in this video as well is something you probably maybe might not be able to see in this view, but definitely in my later clips. Um, just kind of a question for my subscribers. Um, if you personally believe like my, my shoulders are too far in front of the bar and kind of in conjunction with that question, do you believe that I'm having too much upper back rounding? I'm, it's really bad for me to be objective with myself. Um, and kind of the awkward angle here puts the camera a little bit in front of me, not directly to the side. So sometimes it kind of messes with it, which is why I think the later pulls a little bit better judge of that. Um, anyways, any feedback I can get from as, as far as my subscribers, like, yeah, you're rounding way too much, or no, you're just fine, you're being paranoid. Um, for the most part, um, especially on this day, my 405, I felt nothing in my lower back. Um, hamstrings and glutes is where I predominantly feel um, deadlifts, almost nothing um, on lower back on this day. And really pulling conventional, I haven't felt anything in, a, in a quite a long time. Maybe since like the first few weeks, I'm just getting accustomed to it. So 405, awesome stuff. Uh, this was my second squat day, so this was Wednesday. Um, really, really awesome workout. Not really sure what reason. Maybe it was that person sitting right there. Um, it's actually fun to squat with somebody, even though she's a girl, and of course she wasn't like you know pushing me and stuff like that. It was just fun to have her around, and um, yeah, I hit an awesome PR. Kind of surprised with with the weight that I hit. So this was just kind of showing you guys uh, a warm up set. What I really wanted you guys to see there is that I treat every single one of my sets. I really try to hit this home with all my clients. Every single set, whether it's the bar, 135, 225, 315, 405, whatever, anything in between, like it's you know a set. So I'm always perfect um, three-step dropout, breath the same, depth the same, tempo, everything. Try to make it perfect. So here are, I think I just got two sets on film for this day. This was my first set. Um, so this is kind of like my test out set. This was a 320. Uh, again, my rep range was six to eight. I just called it good at six because I knew I had a lot more in me. These were just flying up. So again, you can see that I probably could hit that for you know, 10 or 15 if I really wanted to. Um, and then I believe, I don't have my training notebook like I said, I believe I hit 330 and then 335 and then 340 on my fourth set. Normally if I'm going for a PR, I, I go for it fairly early, like maybe my second set, maybe my third set. That way I'm pretty fresh. Um, but 335 was actually a PR for me, and it felt really good. So I went for 340. Um, and there's kind of what I show you guys, kind of my, my intro to it, kind of how I get mentally psyched up. I, I'm no late Norton with streaming and stuff like that, but I like to mentally make sure I'm in a good spot before I try to hit a big lift. And yeah, I believe this was 340. I don't think it was 345. If it was, I'll, I'll maybe it was. I'm not sure. How my training notebook? I think it was 340. Um, this felt really good. Again, my depth was amazing on this day. Um, squats, what I don't have later in the week, felt really, really awkward. I had to squat a different gym. Um, I had been driving in a car for like four or five hours uh, the day before, so maybe that wasn't the best thing for me. I only have footage from that day. It was so horrible. This video is long enough. Um, but yeah, this was my last footage for the, for the week, really. This is my fourth workout. Um, again, I think this is a little bit better angle to to judge my shoulder angle and in kind of relation to the bar. Maybe not this one. And my, my mainly my lower back because for some odd reason, and again, this could have been because I just got back from a conference and I've been just sitting all day in a car. And that just kills me. Uh, could have been maybe that just kind of messed me up here. Uh, but any kind of opinion I can get. This was, again, a PR 380 for four, and I was actually going to go for five, but I just kind of um, 
played it out. But I did feel something kind of strange, and looking at this, they look a lot worse than my, my 405 did on Tuesday. Maybe my 405 does look this bad as far as rounding. Uh, it's just at a different angle, so I really can't notice. And again, I, same kind of hitching crap that I just can't stand that I'm doing. Um, I really, really, I saw that hitch again there. And I'll, you'll see on these 315s, I really try to shove my hips um, and not get any kind of shoulder you know, shrug or whatever the stupid shit I'm doing <laughs> when I'm pulling. So you see that I'm just really trying to extend the hips there and finish the movement that way. But the, the strange thing I did want to um, talk about is I did kind of have some weird pain. It was almost in between like my glutes and my lower back. Uh, kind of right where that tie-in is, so it was kind of strange. I didn't know if it was like, okay, you're just really getting a good, you know, glute contraction from extending your hips, or maybe you're having too much, you know, lumbar flexion. So um, I did have a horrible squat day the day afterwards, but I think my strength was just down overall, so I'm not sure if it was attributed to that. Um, today I drove 10 hours, my lower back was trashed. My lower back is always trashed when I travel like that. So I guess the proof will be probably Tuesday when I train again. Um, but yeah, if I get any feedback from you guys, I would love to to um, get an objective look at my pulls and whatnot. Um, and yeah, I was doing like a, a switched overhand, so I, I just switched my over-under grip for this last set, kind of work on some grip stuff. But yeah, thanks for this. Thanks for checking this out, guys, and I'll see you next week.